Well, Cristobal Alex is the president of the Latino Victory Fund, which aims to increase Hispanic voter turnout for the sake of achieving liberal policy objectives. He's attending the conference, and he joins us now. Cristobal, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. So it's quite a conference, according to some of the remarks uh, that we have here. So the, the head of the New York City Council, Melissa Mark uh, Viverito, uh, said that enforcing our immigration laws, said this at the conference, American immigration laws was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. Do you agree with that? I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that the speaker invited us to this amazing conference, which is the first of its kind in the country. The idea behind the conference was to bring together local officials from around the country to develop policies that will strengthen sanctuary city policies and protect immigrants. And the speaker, Muslim Margarito, is a champion for progressive values, a champion for immigrants. And the point uh, that she was trying to make uh, is that sanctuary cities are actually much safer. And what Jeff Sessions and what this uh, uh, Department of Justice are trying to do is pass draconian laws that will make it much harder uh, right. and unsafe for our citizens. Okay, in the I've, I've heard this before. And just to be clear, there's no social science to support your position on that. There are no actual studies that show a sanctuary city is safer. Sorry. But I, I, I want to get back to what Tucker, she said. No, that, well, there's no disagreement. I mean, there's no. There's no actual, there haven't been studies on that that show it. Well, let me, you let me just one, correct like you there. It. Sure, I mean, I can talk about it right now. The most comprehensive study to date is a University of California study done by Ted Wong. It basically looked at sanctuary cities across the country, and it said that there's 35.5 fewer crimes committed per 10,000 in sanctuary cities than non-sanctuary cities. It also right. said it's even better in smaller municipalities, and importantly, sanctuary cities have stronger economies, right. uh, lower poverty rates, Look, this, lower insured uh, I'm rates. I'm sorry, I don't want to waste either one of our times here. That's that's not causation. There's no established connection between those two. It's merely speculative. But I want to get back to what the head. Is. Well, it is. I mean, there, that hasn't been proved. So, like, that's I mean, just the state of play here. Well, but let's I, get back I, to what I she hate said. To push back, but look, look at New York City, for example. This is the okay, safest but, big city in the country. I get it. I've lived in New York. City. I'm not denying. But but there's no evidence that one causes the other. So let's not waste our time. I want to get back to which. But by the way, this is an interesting conversation. I don't understand why Thank it needs you. to be a racial conversation. I don't understand why, if you disagree with someone on immigration policy, that person needs to be racist, needs to be committing ethnic cleansing. And the head of the New York City Council made that claim today. You don't speak for her, but I want to know what you think of that. Well, I greatly respect the head of the New York City. She's amazing. She's an incredible leader. She's the first Hispanic to ever hold that position, and I look forward to seeing what she does next in her career. Uh, but the point that she, that, that the conference is trying to get across but, is that sanctuary cities ultimately are not going to resolve the, the problem that we've got here. I think you okay. both, you but and I can both the, agree but that's not that, the, point. that, that the problem is Ellen. around comprehensive come on, immigration come on. reform. Do, do, we've do got me the favor, that. do me the favor of addressing what she actually said. You'll need that to ask was her ethnic directly. cleansing. Okay, but do you think that it, why does it always take a turn into racial demagoguery? You're accusing Trump of being a racial demagogue, and then when people say things like ethnic cleansing, murdering people because of their race, come on now. Look, that's I'm a not horrible speak, thing to say. I'm not going to speak for the speaker, but what I will say is this. The evidence which we just debated shows sanctuary cities are safer, but ultimately the reason why we're having this debate today is because of what happened on Friday. On Friday, you had President Trump and the Republican Congress have the most colossal failure that we've seen to pass a major milestone uh, legislative piece, and that's Trump Care. They couldn't pass it after seven years of complaining about yeah, it. I, I, and so I, I they changed the subject. I watched, yeah. What they've done is to pivot immediately on Monday to attack the vulnerable. Again, that's okay. the immigrants. And that's part and parcel of the administration. Spare me does. the political analysis. I mean, whatever you think of these policies, you disagree. He's been talking about them since the first day he announced for president. So you can't say this is something he like came up with yesterday in order to divert attention from something from which everyone you know is obviously paying attention. But here, here's my question. What is the effect on people already in this country? What do you make of the effect? We know for a fact that when you flood the zone or a labor market with lower wage labor, it depresses wages. That's called supply and demand. You're familiar with that, I know, as an educated we, man. We just what had a debate about, about the economy in these sanctuary cities, and they're better in these sanctuary cities. So I think that, that, that creates a new question, which I think ultimately we've got to answer that together, which is, is the country a better place when you have immigration? And I would argue that it is. Maybe you would okay. argue that it isn't. No, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm not arguing that. And I'm, I'm hoping you'll give me a straight answer. You believe in supply and demand, presumably. It's a natural law as well as an economic principle. If you have an overabundance of something, its value falls. If people are willing to work for less, what does it do to wages for people already there? They go down. We've seen well, wages <laughs> fall or remain stagnant. So, there's no denying there's a connection. What do you think of that? So I, I disagree with you. Here's what I disagree with. Because On what basis? In those, the, the study I just referenced a 
minute ago, the most comprehensive study to date says that in cities that are sanctuary cities, the wages are actually higher. And I will share that study with your staff. And, and I hope when you uh, update your book, which I know <laughs> is happening, on. that we can do that. But, but here's, let me just put this it this is way. This insulting. Uh, Tucker, let, let me, you're telling me, look, the, New York City is a rich city because American finance is headquartered there. And so that's where the money comes from in New York City. Well, you pointed to New York. You can point to Chicago, same thing. It has nothing to do with the immigrant labor there, which depresses wages for everyone, including naturalized immigrants. And I'm I, wondering if you care. Well, here's question. the thing. I, I disagree with you. And you Why mentioned, can you disagree with hold that? On. You mentioned you used to live in New York City. Here's the thing. In New York City, and you've seen this on the subways, there's a campaign. It says, see something, say something. And with these policies that are designed to defund and take money away from local, policy, from local police do, is it means instead of see something, say something, you see something and don't say anything because immigrants are going to be afraid to go to law enforcement. Right. And so okay. this is the height of hypocrisy. If, if you want to make these the local communities safer, you, may, you move resources to local law enforcement. You don't take so what do you, resources okay, the, away from local law right. enforcement. The, the government is making a pretty clear argument, which is obey our laws or don't take our money. And that seems like a pretty reasonable argument. If you're living in your parents' house and they say there's a curfew at 11 and you come home at 12, you shouldn't be surprised when they say get your own apartment. I mean, that's kind of the argument here. It's not about law enforcement or safety. My question to you is, what's a good number? We've got about 11 million people at least living here illegally. How many do you think we should have? Look, to your point about saying if you don't follow my rules, I'm going to take away your money. This is the first time I think that I can think of where uh, conservatives around the country who have fought for state rights and who fought for federalism say all of that applies except when it comes to immigration. Well, don't, in the don't case hang of that. Immigration, I'm not here to speak oh, for on, conservatives. Uh, I'm asking you a simple question. Like I'm, I'm and, so uh, and, the que and the question is this. What's a good number? We have about 11 million. We think. We don't know, but we think it's about 11 million people here illegally. No other country has that many. No other country, as you well know. What's a good number for us? At what point should we say that's too many or well, not enough? Here, here's it? here's what, what I will say. Obviously, sanctuary cities are not the ultimate fix for this broken immigration system. Congress, even though this Congress can't get it done, Republicans control every branch of government. They can't pass Trump care. But at the end Come of the on, day, stop with the at the end of the Just day, the you're going to have to pass a lot to fix this system. Okay, but, so but I'm, I'm not a policymaker. I'm not going to tell you. No, you're how, not a policymaker. You're, policy oh, no, you're a policy advocate who is pushing for a certain set of positions based on your beliefs. And my question as an American citizen is, how many illegals in this country is too many? Have you given that any thought at all since you're pushing for more tolerance of illegals? Like, what would be a good number for us? Should we have 22 million? Is 10 too many? Like, what's your view of that? Look, this is a country built on immigrants. Immigration on is immigrants? the fabric is of the our country nation. built on illegal immigrants? The country really? is the strongest country in the world because of immigration. And so, yes, instead of building walls, we should be building bridges. We should okay, be fixing our immigration you know system. I'm sorry. I'm getting frustrated because you guys always fall back on these bumper stickers. Do you ever engage with the ideas? Do you ever think, you know, my job is to advocate for illegal aliens? How many should we have? Do you ever, like, work through what you actually believe, or do you always go back to we're a nation of immigrants and we should build bridges, not walls? I mean, I'm sincerely asking you that. Look, you and I have some strong disagreements when it comes to immigration. We're not even disagreeing. We, you're not you're, even answering. You're, you're completely entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. And the facts say that cities that are sanctuary cities do better in the economy. Okay, but that's the yet country another cliche. I'm just going to ask, you, I'm gonna ask you one last time. Do you think 11 million illegals is a lot? Why doesn't any other country have that many? And how many should we tolerate before we say that's too many? What I'll say is that the immigration system is broken. We need to welcome immigrants in this country, okay. and that's what makes this country strong. Okay. Mr. Criswell, Mr. Alex, rather, thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Really appreciate it.